Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. We are uh, looking at Deuteronomy. We're in chapter 25 right now. And today I wanted to show you um, how God had a plan. He had a plan for taking care of widows and carrying on the family name. But then um, also, I want to show you how this played into uh, the story of Ruth, which is taken, which is told to us in the book of Ruth. Okay, and Ruth is very, very significant because she is um, was a foreigner, yet she became, uh, she was placed into the line of Jesus, uh, of David and Jesus, uh, and so. Uh, it, it's a very interesting book and how she was kind of grafted in okay when you look at the genealogies of Jesus uh, there's three women that are listed there normally women are not listed in genealogies in Jewish genealogies but there are three women listed there and all of them um, all three of them are not what you would call like oh godly women you know because of all the great things they had done they had great faith okay uh, but they didn't you know they weren't strictly obeying the law, you know, uh, you might say. And so uh, this is interesting how this plays out. And so today it's entitled God's Plan for Ruth in Deuteronomy. All right. So let's read here today. This is taken uh, today from Deuteronomy 25, verses 5 through 10. And then we're going to be flipping over to the book of Ruth uh, and reading uh, part of chapter 4 there. All right. So Deuteronomy 25, 5 through 10 says this. If brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside her, her, the family. Her husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. The first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. Okay? So this is like a huge deal that uh, the younger brother has to uh, marry uh, the widow uh, of, of the older brother and the child couldn't be named after him it had to be named after the older dead brother okay so this isn't too exciting of a, a thing uh, that the younger son would be looking forward to all right so I'm sure there would be pressure on uh, you know who you marry like is this girl good because uh, I might have to marry her uh, and so uh, anyway, let's keep moving on. Verse 7. However, if a man does not want to marry his brother's wife, she shall go to the elders at the town gate and say, My husband's brother refused to carry on his brother's name in Israel. He will not fulfill the duty of the brother-in-law uh, to me. Then the elders of his town shall summon him and talk to him. If he persists in saying, I do not want to marry her, his brother's widow shall go up to him in the presence of the elders, take off one of his sandals, spit in his face and say this is what is done to the man who will not build up his brother's family line that man's line shall be known in israel as the family of the unsandal okay this wasn't a curse that was put on on the guy but it was um a statement being made and so this or and, and a stigma going about him too that this guy was unfaithful um to what the law uh said and he won't, he didn't want to fulfill um, or do what the law said, and so it was it, that stigma was always with him. And so every time they would see that widow walking around, and the man walking around, uh, you know, separately, they'd be like, that guy, you know, he's the guy that that wouldn't marry uh, his uh, brother-in-law's wife or his brother's wife. Um, so he always had that that stigma with him okay now turn over to ruth uh, chapter 4 chapter 4 verses 1 through 12 1 through 12 talks about this we're in chapter 4 here and this is where boaz has made a commitment that he wants to marry ruth okay so i'm gonna uh, we're skipping all the beginning of the story you're welcome to read uh, chapters 1 through 3 that tell that which i encourage you to do of course but now we're at the point in chapter four where Boaz has made that commitment to, to marry Ruth and he needs to go through some steps to do this because he is not, she's a widow, remember? And so there should be someone in the family that takes, uh, that is the kinsman redeemer that, that would marry her. Okay. But, uh, he's not the closest kin. 
And so let's see what happens here. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat down there as the guardian redeemer he had mentioned came along. Boaz came over and said, it, over, came, I'm sorry, let's start over. Boaz said, come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town and said, sit here. And they did so. Then he said to the guardian redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land from Moab um, that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if not, if you if you will not, tell me and I will know uh, so that for no one has the right to do it except you and I am next in line. Okay, so Boaz is saying, you know, hey, I want to bring this to your attention. You um, have the opportunity to, to buy this land. Um, and of course, I uh, have Ruth also. Um, but if you don't want to do it, I'm next in line. Verse 5, then Boaz said, on the day that you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Okay, so... It wasn't just you married Ruth, but you also had to maintain the name of Elimelech. All right, so it, it, it kind of it can mess up your your will that you have already, um, and so this can complicate things, and you're going to see it does. Verse six. At this, the guardian redeemer said, "Then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it." Okay. All of a sudden, you know, this guy had probably, he had a wife already and kids and, and the, it was going to be passed down to the kids and so forth. But if you enter, you bring Elimelech's estate into this and his widow and then um, they, uh, you know, get their share, the daughter or the son of Ruth gets the share, then it complicates everything. And um, so anyway, he was like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I, it's going to complicate things too much. Now, in earlier times, it, this is in verse 7, in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of the property to, to, to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing the transaction in Israel. Okay, It's tied back to Deuteronomy, where the sandal was taken off. Verse 8, so the guardian redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and the people, today you are witnesses that I bought from Naomi, all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Malon. Okay, so the three sons, um, he's, he's got has all that property. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite, Malon's uh, widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from his hometown. Today, your witnesses. Okay. I, I had said Elimelech before. Elimelech was Ma Malan's father. Uh, the Mal uh, Elimelech was Naomi's husband. Okay, Malan was Ruth's husband here. Verse 11, Then the elders and all the people at the gate said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman you, who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah. Okay, uh -huh, that's good. And Rachel and Leah had lots of kids. Who together built up the family of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrath and be famous in Bethlehem. No, that's all good. And then verse 12. Through, your off, through the offspring the Lord gives you by the young woman, may your family be like that of Perez who Tamar bore to Judah. Okay? And you're puzzled by that last one there. You're like, what? Tamar bore to Judah. Remember Tamar was the... Uh, the wife of uh, Judah's uh, son, okay, and they had, you know, kind of this incestuous relationship um, or improper relationship, uh, and you can read about that back in Genesis about how that uh, all worked out. It was kind of it's a sticky uh, situation there, uh, but they they put that in there that out of that bad situation something good happened and and then out of this bad situation something good will happen so this whole thing i want to point out is 
God had a plan all the way in Deuteronomy for the redemption of Ruth, uh, you know, bringing Ruth into uh, God's plan and her, for her to be, you know, the grand, great grandmother of, of David and then um, in the ancestral line of G Jesus. All this, you know, looking at Ruth goes back to Deuteronomy. It's all tied together. And God had a plan for Ruth all the way back in Deuteronomy. God has a plan for us, too. Um, and we just have to trust God with that plan um, that he has for us. And we don't understand everything, okay? We don't understand everything here in Deuteronomy, why everything had to be done this way. But now we can see, when you get to the book of Ruth, oh, okay, this is why some of these laws were in place, okay? So trust God, even though you may not understand everything that's going on. All right, let me pray. Lord God, I thank you for the way that you take care of us and you watch over us and you have a plan. And I pray that we would be people that would trust you in the plan that you have for us. Um, even though we don't understand it all, um, but we want to be able to be people that trust you. We thank you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for watching. I am a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey in the book of Deuteronomy. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then. Thank you.